Well, good evening and welcome to our service. With open hearts and minds, we reach out in friendship to all who have come to worship. May the warmth of Christ's presence and love be felt tonight as we gather in his name. Today is Ash Wednesday, and we pray this time of worship will renew and encourage you in your walk with Jesus. We know our Lord is always near, and let us joyfully draw closer, closer to him. Every year, Ash Wednesday marks the beginning of the season of Lent, a spiritual journey that lasts 40 days. We will follow Jesus as he makes his way to Jerusalem and the cross. Lent takes us to the Saturday in Holy Week, just before Easter Sunday, when we celebrate his resurrection from the dead. During Lent, we're being challenged to search our hearts, confess our sins, and turn to Christ seeking forgiveness. Lent has been described as the springtime of the church year because with repentance comes a change of heart. This is not a time of discouragement or sorrow, but the promise of a new start. Celebrate the joy that is ours with a Savior who forgives. Listen to these words from Joel, chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and relents from punishing. Please join me in our prayer of invocation. Gracious God, on this Ash Wednesday, we come before you seeking your presence. Speak to us in the quiet of our hearts so that we may grow more aware of our need for a savior. As we repent, grant us your spirit as we turn toward you and live again the life of faith. Help us walk ever closer in your paths of righteousness. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. i 
A reading from the Old Testament, Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. For our litany of confession from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Create in me a pure heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Amen. Well, our scripture for this Ash Wednesday evening is Psalm 130, verse 1 to 5. And our sermon title is Relieving Your Guilt. Let's hear God's word. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. When we suffer feelings of guilt, it can hurt. We've made a mistake, done something wrong, or sinned, knowing it's too late to change what's happened. Feeling guilty tells us that we've failed our own ideals. In the Bible, the Apostle Paul confesses his own guilt when he wrote in Romans chapter 7, verse 15, I do not understand what I do, for what I want to do I do not do, but what I hate, I do. Despite our best intentions, we do miss the mark and fail sometimes. When King David ruled over Israel, he had reached the height of his power. He walked with God for most of his life, but David also knew the depths of sin and despair. The killing of Uriah the Hittite to cover up his adultery with Bathsheba was a terrible affair. David sent his military forces into a battle that he didn't consider important enough to attend himself. He remains in Jerusalem and late one af afternoon takes a walk out on the roof of the palace. And there David notices Uriah's wife Bathsheba taking a bath. Filled with lust, David sends for Bathsheba and has sex with her. That appears to be all there is to it until Bathsheba sends a message. I am pregnant. Now David has a big problem. His solution is a cover-up that quickly spirals out of control. Abusing his power again, David calls Bathsheba's husband Uriah home from battle. He hopes Uriah and Bathsheba will spend the night together. Uriah refuses to enjoy the comforts of, of home while his fellow soldiers are on the battlefield. So David sent Uriah back with orders to his commander, put Uriah on the front lines so he will be killed. 2 Samuel 11 verse 27 tells us the thing David had done displeased the Lord. In David's court, there was Nathan, a prophet that God sent to rebuke the king. Nathan proceeds to tell a parable about two neighbors, one rich and the other is poor. The rich man had lots of sheep, but the poor neighbor had one little ewe lamb. A visitor came to see the rich man. To prepare a feast for his guest, 
the rich man goes next door and takes the poor man's little lamb. Then he killed it, even though there was a whole flock of sheep in his own yard. After hearing this parable, David was furious and said in 2 Samuel 12, verse 5, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. Nathan then bravely steps up and accuses David, You are the rich man. What follows is amazing. The arrogance of power that David had been showing is suddenly gone. David began lowering his eyes and then said quietly, I have sinned against the Lord. David couldn't get away with his sin. His feelings of guilt caught up with him. David had a deep love for God and was suffering under the burden of unconfessed sin. He felt a longing to return to God and, and be in fellowship with him. David repented, confessed his sin before God, and we find that he finds forgiveness. There are many today whose hearts are troubled, but the most wearing of it all is the guilt of unconfessed sin. They are longing for a release and need to hear more than anything else the good news of one who can release them. David would face the consequences of his sin, but God never turned him away. God does not treat our sins lightly, but takes no pleasure in seeing us suffer for our, for our mistakes. Romans 5 verse 8 tells us, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ took upon himself the guilt of our sins when he died upon the cross. When we accept his offer of forgiveness, our guilt is taken away. A great load has been lifted. God longs to forgive us, and he does this when we confess our sins. We are then set free, and with the help of God's Holy Spirit, we can live in the way Jesus did in this world. In Psalm 130, the psalmist cries out to the Lord from the depths. Burdened by the, burdened by the guilt of his sin, he feels separated from God. Then he expresses the joy of God's forgiveness to those who confess their sins. A story is told about St. Jerome, who was a scholar in the early church, and he had a dream one night. In this dream, Jerome offered the Lord all of his books, his research, his good works. All of them were refused, and then the Lord said to him, Give me your sins so that I may pardon them. Like King David, no matter how far we fall, it's never too late to turn to God and seek his forgiveness. There's not a sin too severe, not a deed too awful, and a thought too horrible for God to forgive. God will accept us. On this Ash Wednesday, we mark the beginning of our Lenten journey. Lent is a time for searching for Christ and drawing close to him. Many need to hear the good news about Jesus and the forgiveness that he offers. Christ can lift us out of the depths and put a new song of victory in our hearts. Bring your sins, your guilt to him, and discover the one who forgives and accepts you provides the strength to carry on.
Our New Testament reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. From ancient times, Christians have on this day searched their hearts and sought to be cleansed from their sin. They have sought reconciliation with God and with one another. They have received ashes marked on their forehead or on their hands as a sign of sin's disfigurement and of their mortality. Let us pray for the ashes. Gracious, loving God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May the ashes be to us a sign of repentance, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lisa, repent and believe the gospel and know that in Christ your sins are forgiven. As followers of Christ, we are called to struggle against everything that leads us away from the love of God and our neighbor. Repentance, 
prayer, Bible study, and loving others bring us into fellowship with God. Let us begin these 40 days by confessing our sin and asking God for strength to persevere in the Lenten disciplines. Let's now pray and we'll pause in silence after each, pet each petition uh, for you to spend a moment in personal reflection and prayer. Holy and merciful God, we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with all our heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Hear our prayer, O God. that we may start using our hands, feet, money, time, and energy for the good of the poor, let us pray to the Lord. that people everywhere may realize that care for their neighbor consists of more than the giving of money. Let us pray to the God of mercy. For the needy, that they may not have to remain despondent and alone, let us pray to the God of mercy. For all of us here, that we may be honest enough to admit that, that we are selfish and what we can do to remedy our lack of love, let us pray to the God of mercy. Merciful God, on this Ash Wednesday, we pledge to take up the cross of life. We come from the earth and go back to it. In the meantime, beginning these 40 days, we will try to live here and make it a better home for everyone. Through Christ our Lord we pray, amen. Amen. Hear now our assurance of forgiveness. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. May God the Father who does not despise the broken spirit give us contrite hearts. May Christ who bore his sins, our sins in his body on the tree heal us by his wounds. May the Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth speak words of pardon and peace. Let us now pray for, for the Lenten season. Holy and loving God, whose love for us never fails, despite the many times we fail in our love for you, we give thanks that you are still our God and we are your children. We give thanks for your promise of forgiveness towards all who confess their sins and change their ways with humbler hearts. Most of all, dear Lord, we give thanks for your son, Jesus, who gives us new hope and new life by his sacrifice on the cross and his victory over the grave. Strengthen our hearts this Lenten season. Give us a better understanding of your glory that we may better know our sin. Lead us in the paths of reflection and renewal in the weeks ahead that we may love you more perfectly with all of our hearts, minds, and strength. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, amen. And now let's go meet the world which God loves and for which Christ died. Let us proclaim God to be worthy of our trust and Christ of our discipleship. 
Let us live as the heirs of Christ and the people of God in the midst of God's world. Amen.